Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to write your first smart contracts in PyTeal. So PyTeal, it's a binding language for, for developing smart contracts for the Algorand ecosystem and the native you know, language is called Teal, uh, which is a very low level language. It's pretty much similar to, you know, it's machine code and it's very similar to assembly. You can uh, imagine that like this. And therefore, you know, many developers actually use uh, more generic languages such as Python or Golang uh, in order to develop, you know, smart contracts for this ecosystem. So in this quick video, I'm going to show you how to write your first simplistic smart contracts in PyTeam. I hope you enjoy that. Let's do it. You know, coding. So the first thing you need to do, you have to install PyTeal in you know, a package or library for your you know ecosystem. So how you can install that, you know, you can use pip or pip3 and install and uh, PyTeal like this. Okay, you just need to install that. I've already actually installed that and I have it on my ecosystem. Uh, there are some other you know um, um, you know settings that you need to um, you know take into consideration before you start coding. Uh, and I put those, you know, a specification in the description part, or you can find that, you know, in my GitHub repository, you know, uh, in the GitHub repository of this project. But now I just try to simplify the whole process in order to understand how it works. And I think afterwards it's going to be easy. The first thing you need to do, you need to import, you know, uh, PyTeal. We need everything from PyTeal. So we said PyTeal. Um, and from PyTeal, you want to import everything okay and uh, one thing you know a quick note here when you write your code in PyTeal, essentially your code you know doesn't get compiled directly to the mm, you know machine code let's say it goes um, you know it basically translates to teal code okay and teal code will be interpreted by the algorand virtual machine or avm okay so that's how it works so that being said, if you want to write very optimized contracts, very secure contracts, maybe you should learn Teal, which is actually difficult and challenging, and it's not very good for larger scale DeFi projects. But anyway, and the other thing we need here is PyTeal helpers, because um, we want to basically, uh, you know, do some stuff that, uh, that can be quite helpful for us. So I use PyTeal helpers, and uh, helpers actually provides us some some necessary functions you know as the name stands for they are help, helpers essentially here and from helpers we want to import program okay <coughs> so everything is ready so our contract is supposed to be very small so i tried to compact that to a few lines of code and what i'm doing here is based on basically algorand uh, public documentation so um, we are going to define um, two major main functions, approval and clear, okay? So in the approval, um, the scenario is we want to find the owner, you know, who is the owner of the contract, the address of the owner. And uh, we want to do some hello world or let's say a counter, you know, thing, you know, in our contract. Very simple, I just want to show you the, you know, and data types here and so forth. We do have two, you know, general data type here. We have bytes and we have integers. Okay, so these are what do we have? And uh, PyTeal is very strict about the data type, so it's kind of a statically typed sort of thing. So you don't have the luxury of writing code in a dynamic language such as Python. Here, when you write a smart contract, you've got to be very careful about the types, which makes sense, right? Because uh, smart contracts are relatively small and critical programs so you define you know a simple uh, um, function here and we call this approval and these are like building blocks of you know um, t and inside of that we would say we want to have some stuff uh, let's say uh, we want to have you know the owner address uh, so you know array of bytes uh, or a byte slice and we want to have some number you know back just to mess around with the contracting so then you want to say okay i want to have like 
um, global variables. I mean, if you're familiar with solidity programming, it's like, uh, you know, local states, something like that. If you want to have something like that, you need to specify global as a prefix here, global. And the name of your variable. So I would say, mm, um, user, I just give it this random name, you know, it doesn't matter. Really. And, um, and as I said, type needs to be a specified here. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I have a spring allergy. So the type here is bytes, and we do have also integer. So who is the user? Let's say user is the owner. Okay. Then we need another uh, public variable, and let's call this um, um, pin code. <laughs> it doesn't matter, I mean, anything, pin code. <coughs> so the trick here is we can have integer, but if we define that as bytes, it also functions as integer. So we call this bytes, and and let's say uh, the name of the um, you know machine variable pin code. We have pin code, okay. And what we want to return to this simplistic function when we approve basically a transaction. Uh, then we said program this helper now helping us invoke this event, okay. And inside of the event, we want to initiate. A sequence of uh, stuff, a sequence of commands, right? So I would type in sequence, you know, this functional expression here. And inside of sequence, I want to set, you know, this number to something, the pin code to something, and the transaction or the, the user here to transaction user. I want to have the transaction, you know, sender. It's like you know, MSG point sender in um, Solidity, if you are familiar with Solidity, once again, that's like that. You can, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just an example. You can assume that's something like that. Then I want to, you know, get this information. I need to use app and point. Here you can see list of, you know, functions and whatever you need, which is very actually helpful. Global put, so we have this global variable here. And global variable, global, let's say, um, user one, um, global user is, um, is the array of, you know, bytes or byte slice, which represent the message sender or sender, transaction sender. For transaction, you need to use this, uh, you know, identifier, txn and point. Here you can see the stuff like amount, asset, you know, things like that. But I just want to have the sender and this function. It returns, you know, um, but you know, get uh, the 32 byte address of the sender and then perfect clear. And the second sequence is f that again, global uh, put, all right? I mean, assign something for me. Global and we have pin code, right? So let's say you have a, you get some pin code from a transaction kind of you know scenario. Txn and um, here we don't need to get anything from transaction. We want to assign some number here. Let's say um, yeah. So when you want to assign a number, you now need to specify the type, right? So here we have byte, so it allows us to use either int or byte. So here I want to assign a number, and as I told you, Pyte is very strict about the data types. So you don't have that much flexibility here. So you need to say, okay, I want to have an int, and the current, you know. So now we want to make it clear. When we got the clear, um, we don't want to have any 
specific action so regarding clear you know approval you know and things like that i definitely recommend you to go and take a look at the you know teal um you know references also when you want to use it up codes uh, as i told you it's like assembly like machine code things you need to always you know take a look at that one point for new developers people who just you know join to this ecosystem yes you use python here for defining function and so on and it's actually easy and handy but still you need to follow up you know the t um, instructions machine instructions so that doesn't mean you can jump from normal python code that you always write to to you know and then turn that convert that easily to a smart contract all right so that's our code so before i get um, you know compile that i need to also say it has to be approved okay I approve that and things are you know good to go and save this here so now I need to use a bash file which is provided again by the uh, you know Algorand uh, team and and you just need to go to the you know terminal and type bash build you know bash wide and uh, the path of the contract contracts counter this is located in this, this path and the name of contract is simple c without the extension and click and there we go no errors a good sign and what we expect to see is a bunch of basically teal code so i'm gonna go and show you guys how teal codes look like Here it is. So you can see what we got, and this is the output of our program. So for uh, clear, just everything was okay. Approve, return one, and for our code, it turned to fifty lines of code in in T. So that being said, you can also actually give it a shot if you like assembly code and writing low level code. You can actually give this a shot, and you have the most accurate and optimized code ever. However, you, this is, you know, for larger scale projects, you know, apparently it's not a good thing because you may make a lot of mistake. And there we go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, if you like it, please, um, you know, subscribe to the channel and write down your comments. And if you have any question, you can ping me. And uh, good luck.